Thank you so much for joining us today. Erling pleasure. Norby, is that, did I say that right? That's okay, equal stress, fine. Yeah. Okay, great. So welcome to America. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so, you know, um, what's the flight across the Atlantic? Lindbergh and the uh, Spirit of St. Louis. There was a prize involved uh, for that, but that was an incentive to try to uh, 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 create innovation. The legacy of the Nobel Prize. Like, where would society be today if there was no Nobel Prize? And this is not the peace or economics, the, the uh, physiology, chemistry, the medicine. What, 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 where, go back in time, revisionist history. Where, where would we be, do you think? So it, it's, it's a remarkably old prize. The first prize was delivered in 1901. And that was a time, you know, of national chauvinism that the times tends to come back in history. Uh, so the Swedish king was not very happy when Alfred Nobel decided that should be given to uh, a, a scientist disregarding whether he was Scandinavian or not. So it's one of the first international prizes. And science, by definition, is national. Knowledge knows no borders. And knowledge is something that we're proud of in the human civilization, the way it grows. And then there was some important point made in the, in the uh, testimony, namely, that it should be given for a discovery. So you have to think about what is a discovery? Disco Versus invention? Uh, and then depends upon the, on the subject. But this, the, the word discovery is no prizes. But in physics, it's discovery or an invention. In chemistry, discovery or an improvement. And in medicine, it is in fact physiology or medicine. So it's both biology and pathology, the way things not functioning well. And, uh, but again, it's also, uh, and in medicine, it's only for discovery. So we need to think about this. Though, so this began us for more than 100 years. In fact, this year, there are 109 Nobel Prizes in physiology or medicine. And they cover, of course, the whole field of medicine. And recently, I gave a, a, a course about the advance of medicine using Nobel Prizes at, at way, way marks. And it's fantastic how it describes an incredible journey in knowledge that we have taken in medicine. Medicine 1900 and medicine 2017, two completely different worlds. Think about just a disease like poliomyelitis. Most of you have forgotten that there's such a disease. But before 1950s, this was a dominating disease. And everyone was worried each autumn that maybe it's a lot of lung, young children that's going to be paralyzed for life. And today, with vaccines that we have, we are very close to completely eliminating this disease from the world. And think about it. Infectious agents, they don't care about artificial human con constructs like borders between countries. There are no borders in this world. We have just the one world. And infectious agents know that. They spread across this border. So if we are going to eradicate a disease, it's a global effort. It's a joint effort. And if you're going to make America great, you're going to make the world great, because that's how you can demonstrate this. Right. No, I, this is a time when I think we need more science than, than ever. Um, and it's interesting, your role uh, in the Nobel Prizes. Uh, just so the audience knows, you're a distinguished vi vi virologist? That Th that's right. I spent yeah. my, my, my life on the smallest infections agent. Incredible journey. A journey of accumulating knowledge, new ways of identifying infectious agents, new ways of introducing vaccines. We're taking away childhood diseases yeah. in addition to polio and so forth. And also, if there is a flare-up of an, a new, uh, rather threatening infection, we have the tools there again globally to identify it, to take the proper epidemiological measures yep. and, and use the tools that so, we have. So um, let me ask you this. So uh, you were in the room when a lot of the discussions on who should get the prize for the coming year. And the way the Nobel uh, will was written, and this is a gentleman who had many inventions, one of them dynamite, and he left his money for these prizes. I had read something that he had seen an obituary for his brother who, who they thought they were writing his obituary, and they said, the merchant of death. And this was eight years earlier before he died, and maybe that helped him to say, wait a second, instead of, I want to do good with the money I've made from dynamite. Um, so what's it like in the room when people are debating who should get the three prizes? And who do you think got it that, in retrospect, you don't think should have gotten it? And yeah. who do you think 
didn't get it, who sh should have gotten it? And am I right that it's only for the last year? So if something was really profound that people missed a decade earlier, and it wasn't discovered or invented in the last 12 months, is it off the table? So I asked you like 18 questions there, but you're pretty smart. I bet you, you pick, pick the, the ones you think are good yeah. there. So Nobel was an idealist, yes. He made a lot of money. Uh, he didn't have a family. And he th thought that by this, I could make a difference with this money. But his idea originally was to identify that person, 35, 40 years old, give him this sizable sum of money, equivalent to some 20 years' salary or so. 20 so years' he, salary. Because he could really concentrate on this. That, however, is not what came to be developed. Because it's 58, then. right? It's in the 50s at the yeah. average so, age. So it says in the will it should be given for something that had been discovered the previous year. But we need much longer time to see what, what has an impact and what is a true discovery. So we kind of reformulated that and said that, that the previous year we have understood the impact of this discovery. Uh, so yes, I've been privileged to be a part of this. And uh, I became... Did people stand up and get really heated? Did furniture get thrown? Well, uh, they, no, but it, it's a very... Like uh, the Oscars, did people sell videos, send videos nice to, 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 to lobby? On. So, so I became professor and chairman in virology in 72. And in 73, I became a member of the Nobel Committee. But in fact, we have a, a committee that is composed of five members and then 10 adjunct members. So there are 15 people working with this. And then that corresponds to the decision is taken about what today is called the Nobel Assembly, 50 people. It's a good combination. Uh, the medical field is very large, very diverse, so we need to have these 15 people. If I would... And you were one uh, of those 15? Uh, yeah, that's right, for, for more than 20 years. Yeah. And if I would... And did you speak the least about the middle or the most in uh, those meetings? Uh, well, you can speculate, but I certainly was very outspoken. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and the field I was representing I mean, infectious diseases, and, and, uh, and also I, I, I'm quite familiar with molecular biology and so forth. These were fields that were advanced with enormous strength. So I, I was involved in ma many different ways in that. Yeah. But, but very briefly, what has built the repetition is that this is a very careful work, and I won't elaborate that, but we have nominations till the end of January. We start the work with the committee, and we make in-depth analysis and reviews and it, or at that time, it was made by members of the committee. And in, in August, we gather all this review. And it's a book about 400 pages with all these reviews. And that is the, what we use. As is it in Swedish or uh, English? It's all in Swedish. Yeah. And that's the reason when I write this book, I have this advantage of Swedish is my national tongue. Yeah. Uh, uh, although the United States is my second home country, yeah. so I think English is my yeah. second tongue. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you're avoiding the question I asked. Who, <laughs> who should have gotten the prize that didn't? Okay. And okay. who got the prize? And you think, well, mm, maybe, maybe it was not the right choice. Okay. So th this, th these reviews were very consensus. They are real-time evaluation of knowledge, the way we know it at that time. And, and that is unique from the point of our scientific history. And because this work is done so consensually, and I think with the culture that is characteristic of Scandinavia, objectivity, uh, fair representation, and so forth, the job has been so well done. And because the job is well done, the standard of the prizes are uniquely high. Very few prizes can be contested. You can always have an argument that maybe one should have had something else in a different field or so. But so, so let me give you an example. So Bill Gates wrote a book, The Road Ahead, and he didn't mention the word internet once in that book. Okay. And then he wrote a revision of the book and he added the word internet. So he, he missed that was coming. Is there anything that you think uh, the committee that you were part of kind of missed something that was right in front of you and in kind of thinking back, oh, we should have been on that? Uh, and so I don't know if you're answering my question of who did and didn't get it. I will go to another question. I know you're building a fancy museum in Sweden. Uh, right. And do you think some people should um, be given prizes after they, they passed away? I mean, it sounds like the prize was to help jumpstart people's career, not a pinnacle, but kind of keep them going. But some people have passed away. Do you think they should be honored? Uh, is it posthumously? I'm not sure of the word. Yeah, posthumously. So, so there, there, there are two okay. questions there, I think. Right. We, uh, did we, you miss uh, anything okay. big? And then uh, do you think you should honor dead people? So I, I, I should courageous to say, no, I don't think we have missed any major discoveries, honestly. Yeah. There are uh, 
Think about the growing science, 1901, how many scientists were there? How many mm -hmm. scientists do we have today? Probably tens of thousands more, I mean, mm -hmm. an amount of science. We have 500 nominations for a year to work with uh, at the most, yeah. and we distill that out to one. We can't give to everyone. I mean, yeah. and, 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 but they do stand the, the, the test of time, the price that we've given. I, I, I could find one or two prizes that I, I regret that we have given, but yeah. not more than that. Yeah. They, overall, it stands. But, but okay, so you won't go on the record telling us who you think you regret, but you will say there are one or two that they are suspect. That's right. That was okay. one I'm, I'm, I'm writing. Okay, you heard it here first. I, we scooped him. Uh, we didn't get the name, but yeah. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm working on my fourth book now, and yeah. I talk, uh, write about virus and cancer. And the cancer field is a very important field. And you look at the um, Nobel Prize said, oh, there are only two prizes in where we mention the word cancer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, why not more? Well, we do give a lot of prizes in physiology, and normal cell function is the mirror image of the abnormal cell function. Yep. So we need to know the physiology and understand the pathology again. Okay. So and, here, and here's uh, some other questions. So, but, um, but there is one mistake. If you yep. want to have one, it's fee bigger. It was a prize that was given in 1920. I thought you just said there were no mis Oh, no, you didn't miss anything. Now you're saying you, you did miss something? Uh, no, this was a mistake okay. in 1927. Okay. And it, it's stood in, and he had the idea uh, that he had found a an, an background to cancer. Yeah. It was wrong. And that the mistake in that is that one should never give a prize to a discovery that has not been confirmed by someone else. Yeah. This is the golden rule in science. You present your data in such a way that anyone who knows the field can repeat what you're doing. Yeah. And with the repetition, we build this very, very solid, solid on it. And we aggregate knowledge in a building thing the in, in which is exceptional in human culture. Right. I would argue yeah. that the growing knowledge, the solid amount of growing natural science knowledge is extraordinary. And that is what something we should be proud of. And it, it does implicate our everyday enormously. Yeah. So you talk about the World Wide Web, yeah. that has transformed our world. Uh, our life, and one could think about giving a prize perhaps in physics to that, yeah. but it's been difficult to find that there's true discoveries in that, so, yeah. so we, we can't identify everything. Yeah. So um, about the people who've passed away, should they be honored? Uh, no, there's no reason for that okay, at all. Okay, great. No, at next, all. next two questions, you pick which ones you want to answer. Um, not that many women have gotten the prize. Uh, uh, the first TED in 1984, no women spoke, you know, society's changed. I feel like that's a big mistake. I, I see a lot of Scandinavians got the prize. Do you think that was uh, disproportionate or Swedes? Um, and then um, I'm curious, what other prizes are you tracking? Because they must be sort of a filter to figure out people that your committee should, should look at. And then what do you think are the, the things you, you're excited about that you're watching that maybe should get recognized in the next few cycles? So okay. pick whatever you want, but so I gave you a lot, lot of to work questions. with. First of all, we do not check on other prices. We are they the check on you. We are the gold standard. Yeah. And we're going to... Right here, right here. We're, 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 gonna <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to, to remain the gold standard, but that put a lot of demand on you because there's so much science out there, so much yeah. good science out there. Yes, that is embarrassing that we don't have more women among the prize. Now, the last two years, not a single woman. Uh, it's not a, a disregard or neglect of anything, but it... it it takes time, and, and uh, for example, in the Telomere Prize, we had two women and one man, and so forth. Yeah. yeah so, oh, no. um, what, what, what are who do you think is Who do you think is uh, it's time for them to get the prize next? Do you want to reveal? Like, so, no, it, it, I'm a mute. I'm an, I'm a, I can never say anything. Yeah. One of the major things. Can you tell us like the offices you've met with at, at around the world to give us a sense? Uh -huh. You don't have to tell so, us. No, secrets is a part of this unique game. Because if no one knows what discussions we have, what's going on, yeah. we cannot be influenced. And that is very, very critical, yeah. that we are absolutely objective in what we're doing, to the extent that human beings can do that. Okay, so now we need to find out, what about the priority of this finding? How would I know about that? So in some way, you have to sense out in your conduct, and I have the privilege, I mean, again, this is my second home country, and, and, and have these networks, I try to sense out what's moving yeah. by being curious, by gathering new knowledge. And uh, Are you suspect of anyone who friends you, just like on Facebook or LinkedIn, or <laughs> meets you in the diner that they have an uh, alternative so, uh, agenda? So embarrassing. I don't use Facebook. So, okay. not, not, not <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so you guys, um, I just want to wrap this up. I am so proud of Erling. He's uh, 
had a very ding distinguished career uh, at the Nobel uh, Prize and, and an uh, amazing scientist and um, uh, medical leader. These are two books he wrote three years ago, uh, uh, Nobel Prizes and Nature Surprises. He wrote another book a few years before that. Um, and then this, this has just come out, uh, Nobel Prizes and Nobel Discoveries. Um, and it sounds like you're working on a, a fourth book. And I see by the delta here, the next book is probably going to be a little bigger. Um, uh, uh, do you want to say anything I, about your books and, and, and why you, you know, write them? Except, you know, science is a fantastic example of human creativity. I, I emphasize that. Science and technology are the prime movers in our society. We need to know the source of that. We need to know if we can improve on that. So I write about individuals, environments. But the other thing is science is not a predictable venture. You can try to provide an environment and all by science. Because of this human intellect, something happens. Great. And then that is what we want to so, recognize. So you guys, in wrapping up this morning, we opened up with Nick Walker, who plays uh, George Washington uh, in the Hamilton play. And he, he filmed himself oh, yeah. uh, at, the, at the theater. Um, and he went to this school, and this was his inspiration. Uh, and now he's on Broadway. Uh, I think we've all heard of the Nobel Prizes, but it's really special to meet one of the people behind it, the, someone who was in the room where it happened, kind of like Alexander Hamilton, the room where it happened. Uh, and, and maybe someone in this room will be inspired to do something extraordinary in the sciences. And now that you kind of can put a face behind uh, a committee member, uh, maybe something can, can come from there. But thanks for demystifying uh, the process a little bit. And uh, Erling will be uh, in the green room if anyone wants to lock a hair to clone him or um, or get get a uh, get an autograph and um, so that was this book. That's the prior book. The next one's going to be even bigger. All but right. uh, you know, collect all four, and uh, you'll be on uh, Erling's special uh, friend list. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.